GKFX Prime presents the Market Analysis Webinar. Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of the weekly webinar. So there's some big moves in Bitcoin going on. We've seen a, a weekend crash in Bitcoin. We saw a strong finish last week for the US dollar, some signs of reversal. I know I've said that before and it hasn't materialized this time potentially. Uh, we're getting a little bit of an overnight sell-off in stock markets too, and uh, not to mention a huge collapse in gold on Friday. So a lot of price moves happening here, so let's get into it. Uh, so let's start with the euro, probably the more mundane of some of the price moves going on here, but it has broken down through these two rising trend lines that we highlighted as critical last week. You can see pretty much this 122.50 was the kind of crunch area where we saw a bit of price action going on, um, a bit of uh, you know ups and downs as the price tried to hold on, uh, and eventually uh, we had this bearish engulfing candlestick on the four hourly chart, and it carried us down through and below 122. So where from here? Um, it seems to me that um, having broken these two trend lines and having um, having failed to make much kind of meaningful upside beyond this kind of area of resistance here, this looks to me like a kind of failed breakout, came back down to the rising trend line, was unable to capitalize on that. I think having made this move, my assumption is we got another leg down. Um, I can't particularly see, um, you know, well, I suppose the main reason is these highs through here is pretty much why we've we've paused at this level. So there is some historical significance to where we've paused here. But um, if you see that we kind of broke up, came down, basically tested this area before, break all the way up. Now for the last three days, uh, we've come down and we've kind of tested that same range again. To me, this whole big move higher needs a slightly larger correction. I've been talking about that for a while. It hasn't really materialized, as I said at the start. I think maybe now it is. Um, and it doesn't have to be too far, but in the great context of things, you can kind of see a, you know, weekly rever a couple of weekly reversals there. It seems to me that we're probably on for a test of 120, but even if we don't get to 120, um, you can see that this, this low through here, which is just under 121, that seems like a little, quite a neat target connecting these lows through here. So that's basically 120.50 I believe and I've meant uh, 120.70 and so uh, what we ideally want to see is some kind of bounce off this form of resistance and support um, some some distance ideally above 122 um, and then maybe we come into the, the lower end of this kind of cluster of price action through here and then drop down again. So that's that's the kind of scenario I'd be looking for on the expectation that we see uh, more declines here. Now, obviously, generally speaking, we're well above the 50-day uh, moving. Have I got it set as a 50 or something else? Yeah, 50-day moving average. So the trend, um, strictly speaking, according to the moving average, is still up here. So that's why we need to be a little bit uh, cautious about selling while above this 50-day moving average. Uh, but to me, that's part of the explanation for why the price needs to come down. It just needs to come back down towards its average. You know, when it when the price gets too far away from the average, it at least it needs to tend back towards it. On this occasion, it didn't. Here, it got very far away from the average and then just went sideways until the average kind of caught up. So we might be in for something more like that, like a bit of bit of kind of uh, we've almost been in it anyway, kind of range trading and maybe just a, a bit more flat. So um, that's the outlook there. We are down for three days. So strictly speaking, this is a, um, you know, if you're of a different mindset that um, the trend is up and you want to find an opportunity to buy in, well, we've had three down days and uh, we're down at this old support um, just under 122. So it's an opportunity here, but my feeling is that we kind of roll over and we probably don't get back towards this, fifth, this cluster around 122.50 we get a little bounce and roll back down again. That's that's my central scenario for Eurodollar. 
And you'll, you'll see why as I move through to these other currency pairs, uh, that there seems to be a bit of a tendency here for the, the dollar to be showing some strength. Now, uh, I'll move over to the British pound here, and you can see this is our four hour chart. Again, similar sort of action that we saw in the euro with basically a false breakout. Um, we had the the resistance here just above 136. We broke higher, just just tagged 137, <clears throat> and then a nice little um, tweezer top pattern here, uh, combined with a bearish engulfing right back into that previous support. We dropped down. We've gone sideways since, but we have now taken out this this support area, and to me that's a bearish sign. And I think, <clears throat> uh, excuse me. A very good setup here would be if we could come up and, and, and tag that old support. That would be a way to trade uh, the move lower. Now we do have to keep in mind that we've got this big blue uh, zone in here. Uh, this is our 134 to 135 zone, which is obviously our long-term kind of resistance that the general idea is that we're breaking out from. So again, with that idea that maybe we've got a bit more further to go on the downside, but maybe not much further if we're if we're keeping this bullish structure. And so um, for that reason, we you know we're bouncing just above this, uh, just above the area around where well, we're bouncing from 135 basically. Um, maybe we can bounce, roll over, hit 134, and maybe this this maybe we're done. And, uh, and from there we can continue the the stronger price action but it, it, it looks a bit sluggish at the moment it looks like the dollars trying to fight its way back a bit it's hardly um, you know it's hardly a blitz of dollar buying the the sentiment out there is pretty uh, pretty bearish on the dollar um, but so that makes sense that there wouldn't be a rush of selling but we may be gradually rolling over here and obviously the selling picks up the the the, the buying of the dollar the selling of these uh, major currency pairs would pick up uh, once more of a downtrend emerges. Right now, we're still pretty much in uptrend territory. If we do take out this shaded area, which again we, you know, we haven't even dropped that far yet, down to 134. Uh, but just think of 134 as a bit of a line in the sand. Um, you know, if you're short from up there, uh, you know, you either take profits or you take some profits, and then you wait to see if we can actually break lower. Uh, in which case we might have to come and tag this long-term rising trend line through here. So all, all the time we are feeling a bit bearish here. We're keeping in mind that the kind of general scenario here for the pound looks very positive above this rising trend line, this long-term rising trend line, um, breaking out above the 134, 135 zones. So all fairly bu pretty bullish. But obviously we're day traders here. We're, we're just looking at the fact that we've had a false breakout. We've broken through support seems a little bit bearish in the in the in the um in the short term now obviously flip side here for the dollar yen and um it's becoming a bit of a kind of laughing point now having this this channel on this chart for so long i, I don't remember a channel um being in place that's just a clear channel being in place um for so long now we've had this kind of um false breakout kind of down channel i think i drew this in last week but if we do actually draw through this low, then you can see through here that actually uh, one, two, call that a three, this is the four. And then um, we went, the research team mentioned in their morning note for Monday that this is a bullish engulfing candlestick off the 103. Look, we can, we, we've we bounced off 103 several times. 103 very much holding as support here. And this has been the most bullish rejection yet of 103 um, we you know we've just not been able to get through it it looks like it could be a uh, significant base for the price here now we'll only know if it actually is if we can get above the previous major base which is just that uh, what is it about 10450 let's forget um, yeah pretty much 10450 um, that that's the real test but if we you know if we do get a, uh, a move beyond this channel it's only happened pretty much once on a daily basis um, so that would be significant if we can get a close above there by today uh, the bullish engulfing candlestick on the weekly chart would suggest we are and um, 
the fact that we've we've nicely tagged this de uh, declining trend line through the lows and obviously trend li declining trend lines through lows aren't the most reliable because normally the you know the trends uh, can often accelerate faster than that trend line so the fact that we've just kind of we we were in a faster downtrend in this channel and it seems to have slowed up a bit in respecting that lower trend line it's a fair bit of evidence stacking up now that um uh, that this uh, this dollar yen is basing out at 103 and probably the last thing to take note of is on this f uh, daily chart we've had a very stiff resistance at 57 level on RSI a, a move through 57 on this RSI I think will be another indication that this downtrend is reversing um, and we're at least out of this channel uh, and then you know, once we're out of the channel, then we can start talking about potential moves to the top side. Moving over to the Aussie, <clears throat> it's been one of the more stronger currency pairs. Uh, we're still above our rising trend line here on the four hour chart. So, um, you know, still very much uptrend territory, but something to note on the daily chart is that, you know, we made, <clears throat> you know, a significant higher high here, but a, a lower high on the daily chart in overbought territory so this is a classic divergence trade that we're seeing at the moment uh, the top is in we're rolling over we're only a hundred pips off from the high and this has been a decent rally you know if you um, if you say right from the bottom here uh, this was oh so this is basically the 70 level this is an 800 pip rally we're only a hundred pips off from the top and we've got a bearish divergence so that's quite a nice setup that's quite a nice bearish setup actually counter trend bearish setup um, as I said obviously it's counter trend so you know the trend is still higher it certainly can um, uh, certainly can push to the top side again but here you see break to the top side okay pull back to the uh, resistance as support as you'd want to see oh dear lower high breaks the support afterwards now below the 50 period moving average on the four hour chart and then i think we just saw oh no it's still well above it on the daily basis but that could be a target to the downside again i've just got a little bit further away from the average maybe just needs to correct the average moves moves up a bit over time to catch up this price and the price itself moves down and we get a bit more back to we basically get a reversion to the mean um, and that reversion to the mean <coughs> could be a bit of a kind of theme here in terms of the the US dollar so quite a decent counter trend bearish setup here on the Aussie now what are the more dramatic moves gold as always so I've reconstructed the Fibonacci's on this gold chart if you remember last week we were talking about the break to the top side um, you know we said uh, you know I said this uh, 1950 uh, you know that I I even had it uh, I had the zone drawn in something like this you know and I said that would be a tough zone to get through but nonetheless I was positive I thought we'd broken through this declining trend line we gapped out of it moved up to 1950 it was all looking quite good um, I thought we'd get a pullback from there which we did uh, back down to 1900 that was a decent little setup um, but you know we soon knew that we were wrong on that um, on Friday we just completely collapsed and uh, uh, as we've opened on Sunday we've even fallen a little bit lower too and we've tested uh, tested this low from uh, whenever that was early early earlier in uh, December and we also happen to have uh, tested this rising trend line which I've just been looking at um, as a trend that's basically started uh, and if, if we just ignore not ignore but discount the unusual crazy volatility in March when the market sold off you kind of see that gold was kind of made made it low made a higher low, made another higher low and then actually as we came up and we and we pulled back to that 50% Fibonacci before you know that was actually in line with this kind of original trend and actually where we've stabilized now 
is also again in line with that kind of original trend at least on a kind of closing basis right so roughly speaking this has been the kind of speed of this gold trend if we if we discount the kind of March madness now if you look at that massive uh, weekly bearish engulfing candlestick uh, I'm positive on gold uh, medium term but I don't want to be trading against that bearish weekly engulfing candlestick that looks ugly that looks very bearish so to me um, we had a rebound off the lows here um, it's really just a matter of picking your spot I think trying to find uh, where this down downside momentum can pick up um, you know logically it would be actually tagging the underside of this uh, declining trend line but you can see the trend line didn't really do much on the downside uh, you can obviously pick out your Fibonacci levels um, the 50 comes in above it's kind of near these old highs here um, it's above the trend line let's see if a, if it's a, a very weak market you can add in maybe not the 23 but the 38 the 38 comes in uh, a bit lower than through th through this high and uh, so that that's a possibility something like something like just a little bit up from here 1870 could be a consideration but obviously 1850 is the big round number that's what we're testing at the moment and uh, for that I don't know there's, there's not going to be too much demand to buy gold after that collapse um, you know here's, an, here's, a, here's a very equivalent situation we appreciate we've basically been through this scenario a couple of times before huge sell-off from 1950 down to 1850 and then we make our way back up huge sell-off from 1950 to 1850 uh, we actually even go further down huge sell-off from 1950 to 1850 um, so yes literally we've been through this um, th uh, yeah um, two times already and we've survived it the previous two times so maybe we will again um, keep an eye on this long-term rising trend line if that gives way uh, then it does seem like we're reversing our kind of um, bullish trend that we've been in since um, uh, since early last uh, early 2019 um, so then we you know the 50 percent are the old lows is obviously the first target but then we could be coming back down looking at a 61.8 percent pullback of this um, of this big rally that we had um, since March Uh, so a lot a lot going on in gold um, very bearish week last week we've had a couple of scenarios that have been similar um, let, let's see how this all plays out let's move on to to oil uh, on, on the on the flip side oil looks very positive so we highlighted um, on several occasions in the past um, this uh, 50 level as a natural upside target we've blasted through it on the upside now we're pulling back a bit so we basically um, you know I what I would want to see you want to see those old highs ideally hold um, you know it's okay old lows rather um, you know this is a weekly basis not super accurate but something above that 50 level ideally um, you don't even touch 50 to, to, to really stay bullish or maybe 50 or maybe this previous high here you kind of want to pull back into that zone uh, worst case scenario in terms of maintaining the uptrend you want to kind of hold on to this rising trend line through these lows although that would be a bit of a deceleration because this is uh, you know a certain speed trend we've had an acceleration a breakout you don't really want to decelerate back to the rising trend line but it would still be okay it would still be within a kind of bullish context uh, for the price to then pick up again and uh, you can see that on this on a weekly basis there's there's I, I've drawn in before this trend line which only has two touches which could cause some problems up around 55 you know 55 plus this trend line maybe you cause some issues but really um, there's not a lot stopping us 
before we start talking about just a retest of these um you know these these previous peaks um you know pretty much around uh, and I know, and I note that uh, Goldman Sachs had a price target around 63 and they they may well be looking at these previous targets here my apologies I think that their, their target for 63 I think that was in Brent actually so um, that would be a little bit lower you know, on WTI basis that'd be more like 61 or something on, on WTI okay so anyway moving swiftly on to Bitcoin with some of the craziest price action again we're analyzing gaps and if you read the uh, the research report from the from the team you'll note that we mentioned this uh, Weekend gap is no longer a positive one, so let's just remind ourselves what we're talking about here. Uh, we talked about this last week. We, let me just take this off. Where we gapped up, held on to the gap. You see over the, pr the pr price action, we held on to it, pretty much stayed within the gap. Didn't, didn't close the gap, gapped up again. And these keep happening every weekend. So gap weekend, gap up weekend, gap up at the weekend gets even bigger. We test the the top of the gap and don't even come close to filling it here we do actually um, drop through the gap but it gets bought into heavily and we get this last move up here and then over this weekend uh, on Sunday we gapped down uh, Saturday rather we've got down and we're seeing some pretty heavy action and as we, as uh, luck would have it we're actually kind of testing support at the opening of the previous gap up. So, you know, this looks a bit more bullish, uh, a little bit more bearish for once in Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of dip buying that gets happening that gets ha that happens in this, uh, this cryptocurrency. Um, so getting permanently bearish is probably a bit, um, a bit soon for that. Um, but th still, uh, it's quite a heavy sell-off. Um, you tend to get some big, big, big dip buying. I would be interested in getting back to these previous highs and see uh, these these old lows through here, and see what can happen in this kind of zone. There's a few peaks through there on this kind of one hourly basis, and then these through lows. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get back up and we actually test the underside of this gap. And that would be interesting. That would be an area that's not a fairly low risk in terms of its distance from the old highs, depending on uh, obviously um, all other risk management techniques being employed um, for a, at least a re-challenge of the low. So if you've got a big bounce after this sell-off, let's see, where would that actually take us? Assuming that we've hit a low now, which we probably haven't. Ah, interesting. So perfectly the 61.8, and the uh, 50 hour moving average uh, that 50 hour moving average is probably going to shift around a bit but um, uh, you know, this seems like it potentially could be an area to sell into um, if we get a rebound um, if being the operative word and again selling Bitcoin definitely a, a fairly high risk but a calculated risk um, given that we've just had a steep sell off we might get a kind of you know, you get a kind of A, B, C. So if there's a C, could be a very, um, could be very interesting. Uh, and so that comes in. So where is the 61.8 comes in about 38,200 roughly. So let's see how that all plays out. Uh, it does. I mean, it does. We've, we've, we've basically the other thing I meant to mention here. Is I've drawn, you can see I've drawn the round numbers here. So we hit 40,000, dropped, pushed up, weren't really able to make too much progress below 40,000. And it was after after this candle here where we fell back below 40,000 again is where we then gapped down, um, having failed to hit. Th so it could be that we hit 30,000 again um, and then tried to move up and make the big move towards 50,000. Um, uh, you can see uh, on this 4LA chart, was the big market bids have been 40,000, and then 30,000 was in this gap. This this gap was like 25,000, 
uh, and then uh, these two gaps before we finally really started to rip um, were just before 20,000. So yeah, we hit 40,000, you know, a drop down to 20,000 again, a 50% drop in Bitcoin, you know, stranger things have happened. Um, even so uh, we're pausing at this gap at the moment, even a drop down to 25,000, which was the kind of prior gap. And maybe f that hasn't, remember that hasn't been filled at all. So the market might be looking to fill that gap down towards 23,400. So imagine if we've got a bounce up to the 61.8, 38,200, and then we came down to fill that gap down to 23,400. Um, and yeah, that would be pretty tasty. Let's see how it all plays out. Uh, finally, the S&P 500, and um, you know it was a very bullish week last week. We closed at record highs. We nudged above the rising trend line through the highs that we pinpointed last week, um, but only just. And now we're kind of trending down a bit. So if we get a, a, a close above it and then a close immediately back below it again, um, you know, it's not the most powerful signal ever. Uh, so let's see what today's price brings us. Uh, if we get a kind of a decent sell-off and basically a false break of our rising trend line, that, you know, that could be a decent bearish signal to again go counter trend. For the time being, though, we're assuming the uptrend continues. And we've got a kind of rough channel in place here. So again, an, a kind of rough idea as to where there to, if you are going counter trend, when to target it, or if you're just waiting for an opportunity to buy into the uptrend, you kind of got this channel um, as a basis to play with uh, at the moment. Um, it's 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 been a bit more low volatility um, in the stock market um, in the S P 500. Um, it's it's overall been uh, pretty bullish, um, and so uh, you know people still looking for that kind of big opportunity to find the top in the stock market. You know, uh, certainly no clear evidence yet, but we've got our rising trend lines in here. We've got our rising channel. Um, a failure to break out through the top of the channel and then a drop through that um, uh, through that bottom rising channel line again would be a couple of, couple of signs for us um, along with this RSI um, resistance zone at 70 that we've, we've been pinpointing you know that would be some evidence of uh, a top coming in <coughs> okay let's call it a day there thank you very much for watching everyone Good luck trading this week. See you at the same time next week. And of course, if you do enjoy these videos, click the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one.